All right, we're back. Oh, wait, there we go. There we go. I think we're moving. Hey there, hater. Get on the elevator. Push L, cause you go into the lobby. A wild sauce appeared, and here we are in Nowheresville. Uh, they're wanting a pro Pokemon trainer. As a coincidence, I am that pro Pokemon trainer that they're looking for. This fucking ten-year-old boy with a a beret. Have you ever seen a kid, an 11 year old fucking kid wear a beret of his own volition? I sure as shit haven't. I don't know about you all. I... I haven't. I never did. In fact, I still to this day haven't worn a beret. I'm thinking that it's... Uh, how do I put it? Like, you know, I'm... I don't know, like a classical beret is just it looks like a lump on your head, to be perfectly frank. And, you know, I respect, you know, Che and all the other revolutionaries who wear them. Good, good on them for wearing them. I just don't see the appeal for myself, personally. Like, I can see the appeal for a bowler hat, or... I mean, and bowler hats aren't very appealing, at least not to the general uh, public. <laughs> The drink today is Coca-Cola. Not that that matters, because I'm not going to be sponsored by them. No way, no how, any woos. And I was hoping I could... I When I... So... Uh, so... Le, so lacy on town. That's it. There we go. Good. Good job, Silas. You may prove to be a... Honorary Pokemon... Fanatic. Yeah! Mm -hmm. Um... So... Uh, to, uh, this is going to be an episode where I ultimately just shoot the shit and not really talk about the Pokemon. I remember we were on the bugs last, and I was going to get to the bug moves. Uh, you know what? No, let, let's let's clear the bug moves while I'm here, okay? Uh, bug bite. 300 damage? That's a bug bite. Uh, it, it's, it's not a bad move. I, uh... It's... Distributed pretty well among the bug type Pokemon. What the fuck was that noise? Did you hear that? Did my fo did my p did my TV just take a picture? Huh. I wasn't too thrilled about that noise. Um. Anyway, bug bite, 300 damage. <laughs> it's got a power of 60, which isn't bad, all things considering. Like bite in itself, I think, is also 60. But it's nice to have a, a good variety there when it comes to the bug type. Bug Buzz. It's it's a really powerful move. It's the the surf of the bug world, and you know it's a is it a special? It's a special. Okay, and it it's lower special defense as well as ninety damage. That's that's a good uh, that's a good mixer you have on there. You see. The bugs, the bug moves tend to be particularly well done, I think, anyhow, so far. Uh, let's see. Fell Stinger. Fell Stinger's not as good as the others, but it's still appreciated, assuming that you learn it, like, in an early stage, hopefully, because it's only 50 power, so... Uh, uh, first impression, what the fuck is this? It only works if it's the... It, it only works the first turn the user is in battle. Oh, and it's only a go uh, Golisil. Golisap. Golisapod! It's. Meh. I mean, it's powerful, to be sure, but Bug Buzz already, uh, already covers that. Let's see. Infestation. It's alright. It, I mean, the ability to keep it from fleeing is nice, but. Oh, yeah, we're going through the unknown caves. Um. In case you were wondering why it took so long during the, uh,. During looking at the uh, the unknown uh, uh, the unknown writings, it essentially is me just writing it down. Yeah, doing that shit to memorize it. Cause I don't have time to go through a walkthrough. I'm not gonna pull up a, a walkthrough while I'm recording this. I'm not like, yeah. okay, maybe I would if it was a live recording. But since th this is the one opportunity that it has. Leech Life is not 80 power. Is it seriously 80 power? Why does it suck so much? Ah. Uh, 
I don't care for that. I don't care for it. I don't believe you. It's like 30. Lunge. Lunge is good. It, it does the... It lowers the opponent's attack stat. The issue with it is that only a handful can learn it. And of course, Mega Horn. What? Oh shit. Lots of people can learn Mega Horn. I thought it was just a, uh, a Heracross exclusive, but... Huh. Why isn't Pinsir... Why can't Pinsir learn Mega Horn? He's got huge freaking horns on top of his head. And he's a bug. Come on. Get your shit together. I'm looking at you, Nintendo. Pin Missile. Looks cool. Uh, Swollen Puff. I think that's only one. Yep, that's Rabombi. And Rabombi has horrible stats, so fuck it. <laughs> uh, I'm avoiding all of the ones that are uh, not attack moves. Signal Beam is actually thoroughly useful. I do like it a lot. It's a confused move and it's got some pretty powerful uh, attack power as well. Powerful attack power. I like saying words. I like repeating them off the top of my head all the time. Uh, Silver Wind. Also, uh, also useful when it does what it's supposed to, which is uh, raise all the user stats for it. Um, and, you know, a lot of uh, Pokemon use it, like a lot of the high-statted bug types. So, that is nice. Steamroller, what's that? Golem, go- oh, okay. Eh. Yeah. Come to think of it, that doesn't look all too great. It looks like a slightly powered, once used, um, uh, rollout, which is fine, I guess. I find it weird that Guzzlord can learn it. Dude, Shiny Guzzlord looks like a fucking trip. I don't think anybody- I don't think any- I think somebody just worked on it for a good two seconds and was like, yeah, it's fine. Fine, it's orange. That's nuts, huh? Like, the, the boss was like, make it look different. And he's like, okay! <laughs> he did it. Ah, U-turn. I never really cared for it, or any of the baton pass um, moves. Uh, it's situational, honestly, because, you know, some I, I deliberately ensure that anybody... Whenever I, I throw out a Pokemon, I want to make sure that it's the right move type is the thing. So, and, and I like to keep variety in my team. So, if I'm going to use a, a type like U-Turn, it, I'm not sure if, if like, it, it, it's just not my thing, to be honest. Twin Needle. It always sucked. I don't care what you say. Fuck y'all. And x -Sizor. Excisor is a good one. I like it a lot. It's uh, it it's just a, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a bug physical move that does 80 damage, which is really good. All lives to touch each other. Lives to create something. Uh, so, uh, a new and alive. Yeah, meh, I don't get it. And that's how we get defog. I think, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to use Defog for, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't recall. There's a reason why it never came back as an HM. I'm just throwing that out there. Mm. <laughs> ah. And that's why, and there, we covered all the buglets. Now, the reason why I wanted this to be a shoot the shit episode is because of the good news. Da -da -da -da. The best friends ended. Hooray! We're going to be talking about my spitefulness towards people who vaguely know who I am. <laughs> uh, because my life is a wreck. Um, so, yeah, no, they announced it on... I'm not going... I'm... I think it was on the 12th or so, or no, 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 it was more like the 15th, that, yeah, they're shutting down their channel and just moving on on the personal stuff, and I'd say, say I'd agree with, with Liam's implied sentiment where it's like, yeah, yeah, it was coming, 
It, 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 the writing was on the wall, quite, uh, quite frankly. I, I discussed this with Johnny earlier today. Uh, Johnny says hi. He doesn't actually say hi. And, and one could see their um, friendship sort of on the, on the cracks if one adamantly looked obsessively. I didn't because I was already falling out with them and I quit watching their content altogether like like literally almost like five days before this happened and I mean for the first I'm for the I'm for the first uh, example they they the two best friends Matt and Pat haven't made videos together in a long time at least not without Wooly just being in the midst of them and I think, and, and you know, Wooly was very direct, like he always is, or he's supposed to be. He, he presents himself that way. Um, he uh, he also refuses to to answer any questions that I pose to him. So, eh, I you know, he can do what he wants, but I'm just saying he poses himself as as you know a credible you know forward person but uh, honest but you know he'll he'll uh, assert his fifth amendment rights when given the chance that's it yeah yeah no that's it cuz i remember the the fucking uh, i plead the fifth i plead the fifth um but re regardless um it it wasn't just that it was also the fact that um that one uh, one example that I could point out was how you could see uh, intros being made that says Super Best Friends, which is all three of them, and Two Best Friends, which is Matt and Pat. And then suddenly, uh, that would be like the intros and the thumbnails. And then suddenly, like the title would say, would say Best Friends, which means Wooly and one of the other two. And that would be consistent for the last month, if not longer. And, Christ, I'm trying to remember what, like, the last actual series Matt and Pat did together, um, was. And, you know, I'm, uh, Johnny and I have sort of come to the conclusion that it's, it's, you know what, it's, I want, I, I can't say anything because, you know, I, I it's liable, but it, it seems, and well, I mean, I suppose I can just make an interpretation that it's actually uh, a mix of drama between Matt and Pat, namely Pat. I think, in all honesty, he, if I, if I was to be frank, I think that he, his greed, his, his sort of selfish persona, uh, as far as recording goes, isn't as far off from the actual person outside of recordings. Because I think that in all honesty, they were as much themselves, I, I think that they were the closest to real life themselves on, on, on mic than they were, and then I think that it is their true. I think they're they're being honest on Mike, and even when it went, even when like they would roll their eyes and go, "Oh, okay," it was it was honest. It was a fucking honest um, idea. They come from a place of it, there's very little uh, there's very little bits that don't come with a heaping spoonful of truth. It was very real. It, they were they were brutally honest people. And, you know, in the end, Pat kind of comes off as an asshole. And I think that is legitimate. I think that he probably is that way in real life with, with hardly an exaggeration to him. And I think that, obviously, he is a very problematic person. And, you know, and, you know, Liam left as well, way early on, and I think it's because of Pat as well, because the uh, virtually almost the last thing that happened 
to them was like the bet that they made where where Liam's like, all right, I'm calling it, here's your money. Then Pat's like, this is too much, give me the right amount of money. And then Liam's like, this is all I have, so take it. And Pat's like, no. And then later on, Pat's like, oh, you reneged out of the deal, there's no money to be exchanged. And Liam's like, I offered you the money, you just didn't take it. So yeah, cheers. I'm glad that those, uh, those uh, fascist sympathizers and Matt, who you know is just a, who's just a very right wing. Li no, okay, he's not very right wing. He's just very centrist liberal. Like he is the centrists that that alt writers claim to be. <laughs> and so yeah, they're all they're all problematic, and one could see the writing on the wall. Of course, I've gone over the video length, but, you know, I felt like I needed to say what needed to be said. So, I hope you all enjoyed that little spiel. I'll probably bring them up again during the next episode, because I want to. Anyway, stay wild. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow.